Hello, my name is Keshwani. This is K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we're going to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 141. 141 and we are on page number 88 page 88 page 188 and 141 the topic is bell curve the normal distribution here's what's given to us let's see what we can do here here's what is given to us we are told that I'm not going to write the entire problem on the blackboard. I'm just going to I'm just going to share with you orally. We are told that a survey was done in a town, where the survey went from household to household, simply asking them, "What was your yearly income last year? Last year, what was your household income?" If they said sixty-two thousand, if, if if they said sixty-two thousand, sixty-two thousand was rounded to sixty thousand. If they said seventy-eight thousand, it was rounded to eighty thousand. If they said 23,000, it was rounded to 20,000. It was rounded to the nearest $10,000. And a record was kept as to what each household told. But this is what we found. This is what, this is what we found. We found that five households, five people if you like, five people, five households, whatever you like, five people we found had an income of $40,000. We were told that four people had an income of $30,000. Other four people told that they had an income of $50,000. Three people, it was found that three households in the town had an income of just $20,000. And three households also told us that they had an income of $60,000. Two household, I shouldn't have occupied all of the room here, but that's all right. Two household, we were told, had an income of $10,000. And two household, we were told, had an income of $70,000. One household, there was one household in the town who told us that question was what was your what was your yearly income last year he said what was your yearly income last year and he said alas I was unemployed I had no income and one person said what was your yearly income last year he said well I did rather well I had an income of eighty thousand dollars our job is to draw it we are told to draw it, to draw it or if you like to plot it. it. Question is, question is what is it? It here is the frequency distribution. Frequency distribution. That's what a bell curve is that was a normal dis that's what a normal distribution is it's a frequency distribution it tells you how frequently a given value shows up that's what we are told before we begin before we embark on it before we jump into it go about plotting it are you able to tell me what sort of a shape it will take just by visual inspection let's take a look shall we let's take a look watch what happens watch what happens okay watch very carefully what happens well, what's the mode here? What's the mode? What does mode mean? Mode means the most frequently appearing figure. What figure appears most frequently? Well, that's five. Five appears most often. Five people had an income of 40,000. But then what happens? Let's see what happens here. Here's the 30,000. 30,000 is 10 away from 40, isn't it? 30,000 is 10 away from 40. And how many people had 30,000? Four people. The same number of people who had 10,000 less than the mode are the people who had 10,000 more than the mode. 
50 is 10,000 away from 40. And same number of people, see 4 and a 4. 3 people had an income 20,000 less than a mode, and 3 people had an income of 20,000 more than a mode. Mode here is 40. You see how it's evenly distributed on both sides? It's symmetric. Two people had an income which was $30,000 less than the mode. The mode is 40. Mode is 40. This is 10, which means their income was 30,000 less than the mode. And similarly, we had exactly two people who had an income which was 30,000 more than the mode. 30 plus 40. 30 plus 40 is 70. One person had 40,000 more than the mode. And one person had 40,000 less than the mode. 40,000 less than the mode here would be zero. That's, for, that's why it's symmetric. It's a bell curve. Let's plot it, shall we? It's a bell curve. When we plot it, you'll see that it will take a nice even shape, symmetric shape. The two, two, the two, two halves, the right hand side and the left hand side, the two halves are going to be mirror image of each other. Let's take a look at it. And that is called a bell curve. Sometimes some people refer to it as a bell curve. Sometimes some people refer to that as a normal distribution, right, normal distribution. And sometimes some people call it, uh, what else do they call it? Might call it normal distribution, might call it bell curve, might call it, uh, what else we might call it? Uh, bell shaped, bell shaped, you get the idea. They would say it's a bell shaped distribution. Let's take a look. So in, in, a, in, a, in a distribution plot, the frequency go on the vertical axis. We already know that. We have talked about it several times the last few lessons on lesson number 138, 139, 140. We've been talking about it as to what a frequency distribution is. In the frequency distributions, we put frequencies on the y-axis and the values go on the x-axis. Because we only have because we only have one variable. We do not have two variables here. In a normal graph, we have two variables. The independent variable goes on the x-axis, the dependent variable goes on the y-axis, and there what we're trying to see is what's the relationship between these two variables? How does the dependent variable vary based on the value that independent value a variable takes? That is not the case here. We do not have two variables. There is only one variable, which is the income. And we want to see how often it takes a given value. So here's what here's what we had. We can go back to it and plot them. Five people had an income of 40,000. So five appears most often. So here we go. We're going to have five on the frequency. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. And here are the values. It goes all the way from, from zero to 80. Zero to 80. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. So these, these values are in thousands of dollars. So when we say 80, it is actually $80,000. When we say 10, it is in fact $10,000 and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. Let's see what we can do here. So we have five people. We had five people with an income of We had five people who had an income of 40,000. So here is five frequency, and 40,000 would be, this is 20, 30, 40. Watch what happens, okay? Watch, you'll see. Five people had an income of 40, so that's our first point. We were told that four people had an income of 30. Four people had an income of 30. 30, 30 is 10 away from 40, and there were four people like that. Since there were four people who had an income of 10,000 less than the mode, there must have been four people also who had income 10,000 more than the mode, which is exactly what we saw there. You see, four people with the income of $30,000 and four people with the income of $50,000. Then we were told that there were three people, this is three, these are three people who had an income of only 20,000. If there were three people who had income, if there were three people who had an income of twenty thousand, twenty thousand is twenty. If twenty thousand is is twenty less than the mode, this is your mode. 
this is the mode, this is also going to be the mean, and this is also going to be the median. What's the definition of median? Median is such a way, median is a magic value where, uh, uh, where if you arrange all the values in either ascending or descending order, then the median value sits right in the middle. Well, this is exactly the case because of the fact that it's symmetric. The median here is the same as the mode, which is also the mean. So since 30, oh, since 20 is 20 less than 40, and we have three people like that, we must have three people who have 20,000 more than the mode. 20,000 more than the mode, 60,000. Then we were told that there were two people, we were told to two people who had an income of 10,000. Well, if there were two people who had an income of 10,000, which is 30,000 less than 40, then there must have been two people who had 30,000 more than 40. 30,000 more than 40 is 70. And there must have been two people who had that kind of income. Now, why do we say there must have been? Because it's a Bell distribution. That's what it is, it's a normal distribution. We, we, have the, we had the data in front of us, and we could see clearly that it was evenly distributed. How many number of people appeared on that side for a given value, how far, how far it was from the mode, exact number of people appeared on the other side. They are mirror images of each other. Then we were told finally that one person had an income of zero. One person, one person had an income of zero. Here's one person and here's a frequency and he had an income of zero. He had no income. Since there was one person with an income of zero, there must have been one, per which is 40,000 less than 40, there must have been one person who had an income of 80. This is the one person, this represents the one person with the income of 80,000. There is one person with the income, with the income of 80,000. That, that dot right there, that, that there. There we go. If you, if you join them together, it's going to be a nice bell curve. Symmetric, nice bell curve. Here we go. I shouldn't be too cocky. I don't want to mess it up. I want to make, it, I want to make sure that it looks good. And of course, in reality, it will continue. But it cannot because it, it, it cannot go below it. So that's, this is it. I mean, there is no reason why it cannot go continue this way. If continuing this way in the context of the of the problem here, which means if you ask them well, how much income they had, they had no income. They said I had no income. I had zero income. I guess that you can't go below zero income. I was thinking about spending. You can you can borrow money, but that will be spending, not income. This is it. As you can see, the line of symmetry is right here. This is the mode. This is where the peak is. Let's do it in a different color. This is the peak, right here is the peak, which is also referred to sometimes as the line of symmetry. Why is it called line of symmetry? Because everything is symmetric around this line. Whatever you see on the left hand side, you can see on the right hand side. That's it. There is a normal distribution. It is called bell curve. It is called the bell curve. And that's what the bell curve is all about. It's a frequency distribution. Now, what I want you to do is, instead of taking my word for it, that the mean is in fact 40, we're claiming that the mean is 40, instead of taking my word for it, I want you to do it out yourself. How would you do it? How would you calculate it? Well, we had one person who had an income of zero. We had two people who had an income of 10, 10 being the 10,000. Two people with the income of 10. You see two people right here, two people with the income of, with the income of 10. Three people with the income of 20. Three people with the income of 20. We had four people with the income of 30. Four people with the income of 30. We had five people with the income of 40. Five people, people with the income of 40. Then we had, then we had four people with the income of 50. Four people with the income of 50. Four people with the income of 50. We had three people with the income of 60. Uh, sorry. Uh, 60, yes, there we go, 60, and we had two people, 70 right here, two people with the income of, two people 
with the income of 70. Technically, technically, I should have continued here, five people with income of 40, then the 50 should have gone here, 60 should have gone here, 70 should have gone here, but I was lining these up. So, hey, let's do it properly. So we had five people with income of 40, we are here so far, five people coming with income of 40, we have four people with income of 50, four people with income of 50, we have with 50, we have three people with income of 60, we have two people with income of 70, and one person with income of 80. That's the sum of all the values. And then we're going to have to divide the sum by the number. Not the sum. We're going to divide the sum by the divided by divided this sum. We're going to take the sum. We're going to divide it by by the number of observations. How many observations do we have? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. How many observations do we have? All right here. Okay, watch, watch what happens. We have five observations here, five here, and a four here. Four. Okay. The beauty of this thing is that you can rewind the video so that you know how I went in sequence. Okay, well, here we go. So we have a five here, a four here, and a one here. So that makes another five. This and that. That's another five. There's two observations here and three observations. That's another five. There is two observations here and three observations here. That's another five. There is a there is a four here. I'm going to do it in a different color. There are four observations here. Four times fifty appears. Four of four observation and one observation here. So this four and this four is a five. This four and this one rather. This four and this one is a five. This three and this two is five. So we have one five here, two five here, three fives. This four and the one, there's another five, there's four fives and five fives. There are 25 observations. 25 observations. And if you do all the work, you will find, well actually, well, let's finish it up. Why don't, why don't we finish it up? I'm going to erase this part here. I'm going to erase this part here so that we have a little bit of room. It's not going to be, it's not going to be that complicated. So let's, let's get going. So one times zero is just zero. Two times ten is twenty. 3 times 20 is 60, 4 times 3 is 120, 5 times 40 is 200, 5 times 40 is 200, 3 times 60 is 180, and 2 times 40 is 170 is 140, and 1 times 80 is 80. And we have to figure out the sum. We have to figure out the sum. Let's do it together, shall we? So this is 200, this is 200, that's 400. I see 20 and 180, that's another 200, that's 600. I see 140 and 60, that's another 200. That's, so, so 200, 200, 200, 600, 800. And then I see 120 and 80, that's another 200. So it's 1,000. It's 1,000,000, 1,000,000. In other words, it's a million dollars to be divided by 25 households. Instead of writing, instead of writing thousand as a thousand, instead of writing thousand as a thousand, let's write thousand as hundred times ten. Why hundred times ten? Because then it's easier to divide one hundred by twenty-five than try to divide thousand by twenty-five. How many twenty-five? How many twenty-five in a hundred? Hundred has four twenty-fives. You see, four times a hundred, the average is forty thousand dollars. You can figure out the average any way you like it. If you don't like this, this. Uh, if you find this confusing, then you can figure out yourself uh, with a calculator and you will find that the average is 40. Of course it's 40 because a 30,000 appears here four times, which is everybody is $10,000 short, but then 50,000 appears four times. So these, these people who are $10,000 short, these people are $10,000 above 40, they negate each other. These two points, this point and this point, they negate each other, they all become 40. This point negates that point, they all become 40. Because this is 20,000 more than 40, this is 20,000 less than 40. This point and this point, they negate each other. They go in pairs. This point and this point, they're going to negate each other. Because if you ask somebody, what's the average of a 10 and a 70? This is, this is 10,000 right here. This point right here represents one person with $10,000 income. 
don't, don't ask yourself why is it not here. That's, this point should not be here. Because the point what represents is that, oh, this, this was not 10,000, this was zero income. This was a zero income. 10,000 is right here. There were two people with 10,000, two people with 10,000, which is 30,000 less than 40. Then there must be two people with 70,000. So this, this point goes with that point. They all go in pairs. This goes with that. They negate each other. This point is negated by that point. They both, in other words, if you take the average of these two points, uh, if you take the average of a 0 and an 80, 0 plus 80 divided by 2 is 40. If you take the average of these two points, 10, 10 plus 70, 10 plus 70 divided by 2 is 40. You see, they all become 40. 20 plus 60 is 80. This point and this point, and similarly, so on and so forth. Therefore, the average is 40 because, because everything around 40 is symmetric. Whatever, however higher value that you have above 40 is exactly however many observations you're going to find below 40. And they're going to wash each other out. There we go. You have your bell card. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.